Hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Friday. Uh, this is my very first time using Zoom for a webinar, so bear with me if things are not perfect. But if you're out there, please um, say something in the chat box. There should be a chat box in your Zoom so you can ask questions, you can make comments. Uh, let me know if you're there. Anyways, I'm going to get started because I'm going to make this short and sweet. I only have about 30 to 45 minutes, but I will make it quick and to the point because that's the whole point of doing these. Um, so anyways, if you don't know me, my name is Beth Weinstein. I'm going to start sharing my screen and hopefully I'll be up in the little corner, but let's see. Uh, I have something that I made for you as a guide that will help us along during the next half hour. So I am a business coach for Heart Center Entrepreneurs, as you all know, and I gave a workshop the other day. Um, by the way, sorry if you hear an echo. I'm at WeWork, where I work out of, and this is a room that I've never used before, so it's, it's kind of echoey, and the background's a little weird, so hopefully it turns out okay. But, um, but of course, there's dogs running around, so it's great. But I gave a workshop for a bunch of amazing women over the weekend, and it was all about goal setting in the new year. And here's the deal. I, you know... I'm not super like all about action. You know, I do believe in manifestation and staying present and staying quiet and, you know, mixing this masculine and feminine energy. But the reality is um, I've listened to a lot of you guys who are on my email list and who follow me on social media and a lot of my clients that I work with. And one of the main issues I find is people have trouble with procrastination, focusing and really getting, um, not only getting started, but really getting into action. People get stuck so much, especially in this day and age with all this technology and all this social media and all the, the videos everywhere and just our super fast paced way of life. I'm finding this is one of the most common errors for um, entrepreneurs and people who want to, you know, either change their job or shift their career or start a new business. So that's why I wanted to discuss this today, even though this is only a small portion of what I teach. So I named this stop your procrastination, start focusing and get real momentum this year aka slay all your goals but you know that sounds super aggressive for some people but anyways i just thought it was funny um uh oh let's see if this moves okay there you go so the reason why i made this again i was saying a lot of people complain about being stuck they can't focus they procrastinate or like many entrepreneurs they have so many ideas but they don't get anywhere with any of them and i only say this because trust me i know i'm one of them you know i want to write a book i want a podcast i want a tv show i want to go speak and do this and that. But if I don't stay focused, I will actually get nowhere. So right now I focus in on one particular strategy and that's pretty much it. And this is extremely common with all my clients, with everybody I talk to, and I really wanted to address this. So, you know, if you're unsure where to start or what to do next, or if you have a great ideas, but you find that you've spent like one or three or four years working on them, but aren't getting anywhere, and you wanna make dreams a reality and wanna start actually achieving goals, please tune in. And then also, you know, if you have a, if you feel like you have a deeper purpose, but you aren't sure what it is or what you want to do next, and you're really um, starting to feel this shift, right? Like I hate my job or I'm really miserable and it's time to, to make changes in my life, then please keep watching. I'll try to make this quick and to the point, and I know this will benefit you, but these, these, I only know these, first of all, from experience. Um, I don't discuss my age much, but I'm over 40 years old and I've been doing this a very long time. And I've had a um, you know, corporate job and then gone on to help a lot of startups, start up businesses, and then started a few of my own businesses, including two that I run right now. So I only speak from really good experience and working with amazing, um, successful entrepreneurs over the years. So I'm gonna teach you how to get into action right away, how to get super focused and stay accountable. Uh, hacks, as I call them, to stop your procrastination and how to slay all your goals in 2018. And I added in at the end, all with heart and soul, because, you know, as much as this sounds like Tim Ferriss, you know, life hacker type aggression, male energy, it's really not because everything I do is approached from this, this heart place. Uh, and what I will not teach you is fluff, because there are a lot of people out there that are just teaching a bunch of fluff and they only give you half half of the information and then they just try to sell you something. And I don't believe in that. I actually want you to learn something from this. So please pay attention and ask questions if you don't know what I'm talking about. And, you know, as I said, I learned the hard way. I learned from making so many mistakes. I also learned from having really great mentors and coaches and being around a lot of successful entrepreneurs 
and also, um, you know, going through a lot of pains and agony and trying to figure out how to do things right on my own. Um, I'm also a power manifester, especially recently. I've been manifesting like mad and it's amazing. I am a, I've discussed this before. I'm a Sag sun with a Leo moon and a Capricorn rising, which means I'm just really good at this stuff. If you know astrology, you know why I say this. It's a very good mix. And I'm here to help you manifest everything you want. And most importantly, the world needs your gift now more than ever. And I really mean that. So if any of you are waiting on starting something, please don't wait anymore. It's, it's not the time. So um, one thing I wanted to address, and actually, hold on, I'm going to, I just realized, I wanted to make this a Facebook Live. <laughs> Hopefully it's working. Let's see. Um, I, sorry guys, this is my very first uh, Zoom. Okay, here, live on Facebook. Let's try this. This is my first Zoom webinar and I'm totally just getting used to this, but I'm gonna, here I am, I'm gonna go crazy and embarrass myself on Facebook, just kidding. Um, so, hey, Facebook Livers, you have missed the beginning, but we're going to just keep going anyways. Um, so next time I'll remember that. And that's, this is the number one key to procrastination. Do things even if they're totally imperfect. Trust me, it's, it's better to get it out there and be imperfect. So anyways, everything I teach is a delicate balance of the masculine and feminine energy, meaning you know, you have to take actions, you have to be focused, you have to put your mind into things, you have to take risks and develop structures and discipline. But then, of course, there's this balance. And this is really the key to everything in life. This is how creation works, right? It's all about balance, masculine, and feminine, or else there wouldn't be such a thing as creation, right? Um, surrender, you have to really take actions and surrender to how they unfold. Like, maybe you start a business, like a running clothing company, and then you end up doing business coaching. Hey, <laughs> it happens, trust me. <laughs> um, or, you know, you put focus and then, um, you know, you kind of let go of the results. You put your mind towards something, but then you also have to always have your heart in it or else, it, you know, it won't resonate. It won't work. You won't be inspired. No one else will be inspired. So I, everything I teach, I always put this up just to keep it in mind. Um, so really quickly, I'm going to go over very simple steps and try to keep it as, as easy to understand as possible. And here are the overall steps. We'll go through them one by one. Uh, the first one is a release. So when I did this workshop over the weekend, we, you know, it was a bunch of women. It was really great. And we actually wrote down all this stuff we wanted to release and then shredded it up. And ideally we would have burned it in a fire, but I didn't have a fire in the middle of my apartment. But so in with release, you know, let's say we're releasing the last year. And I've heard from everybody that 2017 was really hard, right? And throw in politics, throw in the state of the world. It was tough. So what is it you want to release? Um, how do you move forward? And this, this is really one of the keys to moving forward is to, to let go and forgive and release. And I like to call it this rebirth because it's a constant rebirthing of whatever it is, your life, you know, your business, your work, um, things that happen. And these are the keys, forgiving yourself and others. So these are exercises. We're not going to do them together today or else this would be a you know, two-hour webinar. But I want you to print this out and do this at home on your own this weekend. It will make a difference. And please do it this week because with the energy of January and, um, you know, the, the moon and, and where we are in Capricorn or were, uh, you know, coming out of Capricorn, this actually is really great. Even if, you know, it's a few weeks after the New Year's, it's really great to do this exercise now so you can really have momentum the rest of the year. So write down what you want to release, like struggles, losses, big mistakes you made. Um, any anger you have against certain people. And yes, in the US, I included Trump. You know, every day it's, it's a matter of forgiveness, forgiveness of politicians. And that does not mean complacency. It just means, you know, releasing these, these grudges and these angers. Um, another thing, I, I've discussed this before in email, you know, I've given talks about this, the Ho'oponopono mantra, which you can click on this link here. My friend Jessica did, my friend Jessica Pratt sang it for us. It's really good and it works miracles. And you can Google this and you'll see that there's, um, there's other famous authors that discuss this. I have stories upon stories to tell. And this really works. So whenever you're feeling bad or angry or you know, need to release, try this mantra. And I, I actually challenge you to try it over and over for at least a few weeks and see how much your life changes. 
but that's a whole nother webinar on, on its own. Ah, look at this. I actually um, am missing part of gratitude. <laughs> that's what happens when you do things um, imperfectly, but it's great. Um, so the next step is, you know, going into gratitude. What are you grateful for that actually happened in 2017? Whether it's good or bad. And I use quotes for good or bad because, you know, I really try not to see things as good or bad because in the end, we have to really develop this, um, you know, love for everything and appreciation for everything, even the bad and challenges, because that means more growth opportunity and more learning and evolution. And that's why we are here on earth. So um, write down where you can bring in more gratitude and less complaining and acknowledge the basics. Like you're alive, you breathe, you have water. Oh man, two pages of gratitude spelled wrong. Oh well. Um, so again, these are actions. Write down and really do this exercise on a, a handwritten piece of paper. It makes a huge difference. And if you can, even get a group of people together or um, you know a couple friends. It'll make it even more powerful. And then um, you know. A friend of mine calls me out on my complaining because I've been known to complain and I'm on a complaining cleanse and I'm always getting better, but I'm really dedicated to complaining less and really being grateful, you know, cutting the whining, you know, complaining about the subway being late or overcrowded or whatever it is, like the day-to-day -day complaints, complaining about the cold weather, come on. Like, you know, th there's always something to be grateful for. And I, I really um, challenge you to look into this and, and really take this on as a new you know, a new challenge in 2018. It will change your life. So number three is connecting to your why. And I know you've heard this before, you know, there's famous TED Talks on this. And, but really connecting to your values and your mission, your heart and your intention. Like, what is it, you know, when you're going to write your goals, which is the next step, you really want to connect to why you want whatever it is you want. Like, why do you want to leave your job? Why do you want to start a business? Why do you want to make, you know, $500,000 this year? Why do you want to travel the world? Um, and really connect to that like deep inside and really also a big key to this is why understanding why it will actually help you and how it really helps others and helps the world and helps serve the planet in a larger way. Like, you know, is making a lot of money just so you can buy a nice house for yourself or is it, um, you know, to buy a nice house and then be able to host retreats at your house. You know, for example, that's something I wrote down. Um, you know, and it doesn't mean like everything you do has to be serving other people, but really think about like, you know, is it a really an ego based attachment to why you want something or is it for the greater good? And so this is part of the action step. So as you'll see on each page, I have the overview and then I have actions to do. And this, the, doing these actions is how you stay in action, right? Don't just read this, actually take the time, literally take an hour, spend some time writing and really connect to this. And Write down why it is you want to achieve your goals this year. Like, what is it in your grander vision? And what, is, um, what do you want for the good of the whole? Like, what's your deeper mission, mission to help either other people or the planet or your community or your family or, you know, friends, whatever it is. And here are some other actions, and I've discussed this so much, I can't keep repeating myself, but I always will. Um, really quiet your mind. Like, daily meditation practice, even if it's five to ten minutes a day. You know, or even if you do a quick meditation before you start this, which normally if I wasn't rushing a webinar, we would start with a meditation. But I really wanted to cut to the chase because it's a Friday afternoon and I know how things go. But really um, quieting your mind and, and really taking the time to, you know, take everything from your head and pass it down to your heart and really start thinking from your heart. And this is the next thing, like learn how to listen to your heart, right? Because our head swirls around with fears and ego and attachment and um, worries and doubts and you know self-sabotage and self-doubts and judgments and quieting your mind with meditation or you know similar meditation meditative practice I guess although I really think real meditation is the key um, these will help you connect to things like why and same with visualization which is similar to meditation but it's not meditation it's very different but really visualize like okay, one of my goals is to buy a house in upstate New York this year. And I, I you know, I start to feel like, okay, I feel the, the trees and the birds. And I feel like what it feels like to have people come into my house for the first time or host a, an event or have retreats or whatever it is, you know, have groups, you know, friends there and really feel like how, how it's going to feel lighting a fire in my fireplace. So really get into those kind of visuals, visualization. Oh my God. So sorry about all this. <laughs> it seems like my keynote has, um, 
I'll fix this before I send this out to you guys. But anyways, this is supposed to say set goals. So I love it. What goals, um, what goals do you want to set and why, right? So think about all the goals you want for this year. And I write down here, not too many and not too few. So here's the deal. You know, you can't really spend a lot of your energy on making goals like I'm going to drop off my laundry at the laundromat every week, which you already do, you know, like don't focus on that. And then you also don't want to go too crazy because, you know, there's a balance between stretching yourself to, um, you know, get uncomfortable and, and start to really put yourself out there. But then also you have to be realistic, right? Like, you know, I want to buy a house. I have a time frame, I, but I'm also realistic about, okay, I'm not going to just buy the first house I see, right? I'm going to buy a particular house and I know, you know, what I need to look for. So, you know, when I'm setting this goal, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm going to buy a house by like February 1st, which is in a week and a half, you know? So it's really this balance of stretching yourself to do bigger things, but then um, also be, re you know, stay a little grounded in reality. Um, but not too much ground in reality where you're comfortable because that's pointless. Um, and again, keep connecting to your why and what it is you want. So do this in any way you feel called to. I like doing um, not only a list, but then I do this kind of nice graphic. And actually, I have pictures I can show. Maybe I'll, I'll send them out when I send, send this to you guys. But write goals for each area of your life. And these are ones that I suggest, like um, family, friends, romantic relationships, career, money, your health, uh, personal growth, you know, different areas like this. And always really um, something larger than you, like a long-term goal or and or a contribution to society or to the world. Like, you know, and, and again, it doesn't have to be this year per se. Like I have large scale goals, but they're probably not all going to happen this year. But I always keep them written down because it's, it's all about taking the steps to get there, right? Like if I want to, let's say, have a whole group of people at my house, you know, first I need the house, right? Like one step at a time. And also write down how will you know when it is that you achieve these goals and how will you feel? So when you write down each goal, write down how will you know you actually achieved it, right? Like, so a lot of people do this thing where they're like, eat healthier or exercise more. And it's like, it's great, but it's not concrete enough. And, you know, it's like, how do you know you really exercise more? So I exercise usually like five times a week. If I just write down exercise more, you know, I'll probably end up just doing the same thing. I'll just keep going five times a week. But if I write down specifics, like I am going to exercise, you know, I'm going to run every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and do yoga every Tuesday and Thursday and then do weight training on Sundays. Like that's six times, right? That's specific. So really, um, you know, the whole point of how will you know is really understanding like what does it actually take? Like, you know, one of my adventure goals, I don't know, you know, go to Iceland or um, go to Peru. You know, how will I know I, I actually met that goal? Well, like I have a ticket book. I have it on my calendar. I have plans. Like I actually buy everything I need to go there. You know, it sounds so common sense, but it's amazing how many people set goals without having these, these um, details. So a huge action. This one will change your life. And honestly, this comes very naturally to me. Um, so when I found out other people don't do this, I was surprised. But of course, you know, some people this comes a little easier and some it doesn't. But really, you know, when you have these goals, like, again, I'm using, um, let me pick a different one, like, a, I don't know, spiritual practice, right? Like for me, I have, a, I have meditate, like I have a certain meditation goal. Like right now I meditate every day for 20 minutes, but I want to start increasing it to, you know, 45 minutes a day, right? So that's one of my goals. So when I break it down into a smaller goal, I want to break it down into like exactly, um, you know, not just meditate more, but literally like um, Monday through Friday, I'm going to meditate 30 minutes a day. And then, you know, Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to make it 60 minutes a day. And then, you know, um, Monday nights and Wednesday nights, I'm going to add an additional night. So, and then I break it down into smaller tangible goals, like daily goals. Um, or, okay, buy a house upstate is one of my goals, right? And it's, it's very vague, like upstate New York is gigantic. But the smaller goals are, you know, um, make appointment with realtor, reach out to my friends that live up there, start looking in, um, you know, set a weekend, like I actually have this written down, weekend, look in Ulster County, uh, you know, call, um, 
call a friend to find out how much it costs her to renovate her house or, you know, whatever it is. And these are the smaller steps to get there. And these, these are very important, right? Um, you know, like meet my love of my life. Smaller step would be, I don't know, um, join Tinder. <laughs> Sorry for those of you that hate Tinder, but you see my point. Um, so balance realistic goals with a stretch. And again, really think about this. Like, are you stretching yourself enough to get inspired? Or are the goals you're saying the same goals you've had for the last 10 years and you're just super stagnant? Because a lot of people are stagnant and that's why they're unhappy. Um, so calendarize. I know this word sounds so corporate. I, I learned this in my corporate days, but it, actually I like the word. So here's the deal. For those of us that are into... Um, you know, deep spiritual esoteric uh, beliefs and practices actually know that time as we know it in this linear fashion doesn't exist. And it's funny because this came up in my, um, you know, the, the goal setting circle I had. One of the beautiful women was like, well, time is all present at once, which is true. Time is only now. There's only one time and everything is happening all at once. So it's circular more than linear. But we still live in this material reality of the way our modern world works with calendars and with dates and, you know, events happening and growth and evolution. And this is why we have to develop this, this kind of relationship to time and calendar. And there is a way to have a nice, healthy relationship and actually use it to create less stress and to create more happiness and more benefits in our life rather than being a prisoner of time. Right? So, because trust me, I, you know, I struggle with being a prisoner of time. All of us do. But there's actually a way to plan in advance. So, you know, I know I'm doing, a, I don't know, a website in April or, you know, taking off in August or hosting another summit in May, you know, like these kind of things. Think of it as a map. Think of your calendar as a map to climbing a large mountain and, and on, you know, multiple trails. And your calendar is really a map to get you there. And really get into the habit of getting used to a calendar. So I have some hacks to help create a habit and, and learn to actually enjoy using a calendar to your advantage and not freaking out and not being like, oh, I'm an energy healer and I don't do time. Like, you know, I get it. Like, there's so many people I know who live like this. Like, oh, I don't exist. I don't, you know, time, blah, blah, blah. But the, the, you guys, it's all about balance, right? It's a masculine feminine balance. So really pay attention to this and really, you know, try on these little things to, to see if, how this affects your life. So when I say calendarize, when you make these goals, actually go back to all your goals. And I, you know, the women in the workshop, I had them do this, write down specific dates for each goal. And it doesn't mean, you know, if I don't do this by February 1st, that's it. I'm just a terrible person. And now I'm going to get upset with myself. It just means you have a target. You have, you know, something to work towards. Because if you don't set dates to certain, um, you know, especially big goals, you know, you won't have a plan in place to actually, you know, create actions to get there. So really pick a date, right? Like I want to sign X number of clients by X number of date, or, you know, I want to, um, for example, like grow my email list by 5,000 more people. And I, you know, picked a date to have that happen. And in order to have that happen, I'm going to do, you know, a certain collaboration with some of my peers. And then I picked a date for that collaboration to happen. So then I can work backwards to get that collaboration going because it takes time to do all these things. So this is how it works. Um, and break them down to, you know, month and then week and then day. And again, that's like a whole nother webinar in itself, but I'll talk a little more about it. But so here's a great action. A lot of a lot of us, you know, do these moon circles or work with the moon phases. But and you know, some of you have heard of like new moon intention setting. It's great. I do it too. But I also use the moon cycle to, um, you know, again, be a little more in the material world of, okay, it's been 28 days. What did I do? What's coming up next? Like, you know, maybe I need to reprioritize. And I look over each of the goals, and it's really great because. You know, the moon is our natural clock. Like we can look up and see it. We know what phase it's in. You know, for those of us that pay attention to full moon and new moon, we, we know the energies. So you can actually use these energies. You know, there's a belief that you start things at the new moon and then they expand at the full moon and then you use the waning moon to kind of look back. It works for a lot of people. Um, sometimes it doesn't work in reality. Um, you know, I actually do use that to plan a lot of like launches and things, but I also have noticed I get a ton of energy in the waning moon. So who knows? 
Um, you have to play around with the moon and whatever works best for you because every human is different. So here are some hacks to form a calendar habit. So buy yourself a really nice calendar. I buy nice moleskin books. I buy like nice gel pens. So they're really fun to use. And it feels good. And I like to carry it and I like to look at it. I also, I have a gigantic like wipe calendar to plan three months at a time because I have so much going on and I like to see it pretty big. I also use a Google calendar and because I have clients scheduled and phone call that integrates with a different calendar, my booking calendar. And I know that sounds extreme, but you know, I use them each in different ways and they all, they all overlap. I, I mean, I always put the same events on the same calendar. So they're not, you know, it's not like I'm missing anything. Um, use alarms and reminders if you have to, like, you know, some people literally have to set an alarm to meditate every day. I used to use an alarm. And then I, you know, created a habit. So now I don't need an alarm. You know, if you only want to, are just starting exercising, then, you know, set alarm at the night before to exercise the next morning, you know, three times a week. Um, and here's another one, schedule in your bullshit, right? So this is very funny, but I know I'm going to address this soon, but a lot of you struggle with, um, you know, watching YouTube videos or being on Instagram or playing on Facebook or blah, 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 Facebook this. And, you know, just so many distractions out in our world, like even reading email, you know, there's so many theories about email that we're not supposed to be reading it like all the time. So you can actually schedule in your email time. You can schedule in your Facebook and Instagram time. I do this, you know, unless I'm hosting something or, you know, dealing with certain things that happen, like, you know, I'm in a particular Facebook group, I have my own, but generally I schedule my bullshit time, right? So that way I know I'm bullshitting, like flipping through Instagram for five minutes, you know, and that's it. Or, um, you know, if I have to read emails, it's like twice a day or whatever it is, or if a client, if it's a client email, it's different. But do you see my point? You really have to take charge and hack these things yourself. Um, here is a calendar that I made and you can download it. Just click this link. It is completely free. I actually designed this myself because I couldn't find one annual calendar I liked out there that was like also clean and pretty. The only thing this has on it are the exact dates of this year and the moon phases. And even then, if you look closely, it's just a picture of the full moon and the new moon. No international dates, nothing else. And it's really, um, you know, so we can, you can print it yourself. It costs me 25 cents to print at a local printer. Like, and you can print it pretty big if you want, but I print it like this. And you can print out a bunch of them. So if you have to redo it every three or four months or, or whatever, but it's great because you can really get an overview of big things. Like I know I'm taking a trip in August. I know, you know, holidays, whatever. So use this to your advantage. Um, I see some of you have questions. I am going to uh, address these in a little bit at the end. So really quickly, um, let me see if I can get this out of the way. Okay, so stop procrastination. Oh my God, okay, I am going to fix this. <laughs> Anyways, this is about how to stop procrastination and get accountable. So first of all, declare your goals in public and to the universe. So this works two ways. One is, you know, when you start to declare these things a reality, like I am now a business coach or I do Reiki healing or um, I just launched a website. If you declare it to the public, it, it really helps get that momentum. And I know it's really scary, but it helps get it out there. Um, this is why I always recommend doing this with other people or doing it on your own and then, you know, reading it with a friend or, or calling a friend you know, sharing it on social media, whatever. And then also it does something energetically. You know, when you put yourself out there, the universe is seeing like, wow, she's making uh, steps towards this thing. I'm going to start supporting her. And for those of you that don't believe in woo woo, you can call me up and I'll talk to you more about it, but it really works, right? It's like every little action, every little step, every little, like, little decoration of what it is that you want. It really sends a message to the universe. And this is how co-creation works collaboration with the universe. So really, um, you know, even if it's scary things, like, again, the group that I hosted, a couple women reached out, like within two days, they were like, I just, you know, I signed up for yoga teachers training. And now it's like the first step for her to put herself out there as a yoga teacher. It's amazing. I know it was scary, but it happened. Um, commit. So commit to your goals, really commit to your visions and really stay connected. And this is why I recommend doing this in a great, in a like really nice notebook that you can read over and over. Um, always remember that procrastination is total paralyzation. 
And I know you know that, but the more you're aware of it, the more you're gonna stop doing it. So again, this comes back to um, quieting your mind and really staying aware, like the awareness of, of how you're thinking and what you're doing. But here are some causes to be aware of, of procrastination. So it's caused by fear. It's caused by not being clear on what you're doing and what's next. It procrastination is caused by poor planning and by winging it all on your own and just trying to figure it out along the way. Um, not being inspired to do anything. Of course, if you're not inspired, you don't want to do it and then you're not going to do it. And not really connected to your greater why. So every time I feel a little bit burnt out on my, my business, which is rare, but it happens. Every time I feel burnt out, I start to think of like, wait, why am I doing this again? And I reconnect right away to my larger mission. And it's like instantly... I, I'm just there and all of a sudden I'm like, you know, everything's rolling very quickly and, you know, clients coming in. It's amazing. So um, here are some more actions for stopping procrastination, getting accountable. So really feel into like what causes you to procrastinate the most? Like, is it social media? Is it bullshit? Is it being tired all the time? Is it um, just being lost and not knowing what to do? Is, you know, not having mentors to, to help you along the way. Um, and think about what are some positive outcomes you will actually get for taking steps towards your actions and taking action. Like, um, you know, how will it make you feel when you sign up for that yoga teacher's training? Like, how will it make you feel when you get your first client? Like, wow, I'll make more money if I actually put myself out there as a life coach, you know, whatever it is. And really think about what's your biggest time suck. And you guys, you have to start being honest with yourself. Like, I deal with this with clients, with everybody. Like, you know, social media, YouTube, TV, magazines, blogs, emails, like friends, text messaging, Snapchat. I mean, we are living in this, this world of, you know, not just, I love technology and I know how we can use it. Like here I am on technology. I love technology, but you guys, you really have to get a grasp on your time sucks and, you know, take charge of your life. So more, um, more hacks trick your brain, you can change your language around certain things. So if you want to start a business, I, I say this all the time, change the word from start a business to doing a project, right? Like just call it a nonprofit, just call it a project. That's how I started one of my other businesses. I was like, you know what? The more attached I am to it being a business and money involved and me and all these scary things, the more I, I freeze. But when I started thinking of it as like, you know what? Let me just do it for fun as a fun project for my heart. That's when it started taking off. That's when I took actions. That's when I just did it. So you have to really change your brain and take tiny, tiny steps, plan ahead with the calendar, um, develop awareness of your procrastination. This is like number one. And when you're sitting there on your phone, uh, like, like this, uh, just staring at Instagram, this is how your awareness is gone. You know, it, it, there's, a, there's a really a way to have mindful relationship to your time stuff. You know, if you have to, delete apps. Like, I do it all the time. I, I sometimes go and, like, delete all my social media for a month or two months even. Um, you know, I, I give my ex-boyfriend, my friend Kay, a friend of mine, credit for this one. What he does is he doesn't have any automatic sign-in on any of his apps, and he makes super complicated passwords that are really hard to remember, and they're really annoying to type in. Like, they have, you know, 20 different characters, and you have to press all these things. So he makes it actually hard for him to get into his apps. There's also a bunch of apps for blocking. Um, you can block your newsfeed with a Chrome extension. You can, sh you know, there's uh, apps that shut down your computer at a certain time to go to bed. Like my, my alarm goes off on my computer at like 11.15 every night to shut it off. And there's so much technology out there to help us stop and actually stay focused. I also suggest get a coach or join a group or a mastermind because these are the, the number one ways you will stop procrastination and get accountable. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a coach. I'm saying this out of someone who's done this millions of times, run multiple businesses and been around amazing, successful entrepreneurs for years. They don't bullshit. Like they don't bullshit like the rest of you do. Like, trust me, um, they're just, they're hyper focused. And when you have a group or a coach keeping you accountable, and especially when you're paying a lot of money for them, you will do the work. Like you will start taking actions. It works. And then also um, make sure you sleep, take time off, eat healthy, and really keep a balanced health. Because a lot of times when we bullshit on apps and Instagram and whatever, it's because we're tired or we're in like a, you know, we went sugar high and sugar low. Um, so really take a good look at your health too. So 
again at the top that says get support. So get support and accountability to help you take consistent action so you can get the results you want. Taking new and often uncomfortable actions and facing your fears is how you'll get past your fears and blocks. Having support and accountability to take consistent actions and move past your fears is the key to growing your businesses, your finances, and your life to where you want it to be. And I've used this before. I will probably leave it on here forever because it's, it's like all you need to know, right? Like for those of you who struggle with focus and procrastination and being lost or not knowing what to do next, or maybe your business makes 50 grand and you want to make 100 grand, these, you know, you have to get support and you have to get uncomfortable and you have to start being accountable to, to grow and get results. Um, so really take a good look at this and, and be honest with yourself. So, um, you know, again, with accountability, just to let you know a little bit more about myself, I am not asking you to buy anything today. I don't want you to, you know, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm just letting you know what I do. I only work with people who are really committed to making massive change in their business and their life, you know, changing their career, tapping into their purpose, whatever it is. I work with all, you know, I work with executives and, and you know, individuals, everybody, but only people are really ready because if you're not willing to do the work and actually listen to the coaching, then it's pretty useless to have a coach. So you have to really want to change. You know, Tony Robbins says this, anybody can change in one second. It's just making that decision to change. And that's, I mean, it's the truth. So if you decide to change, get support. And I'm offering everybody a free strategy session. They last 30 to 45 minutes where, you know, I'll look at, we'll talk about where you're at and what you're struggling with and what you're up to. And then I'll actually give you strategies that can help you. And I can show you tons and tons of replies and, you know, people writing me back, telling me, you know, the, the one thing they said to them really transformed their business. It's amazing. Um, so really take advantage of this. There's only a limited number of them and it's really only um, this week and a couple of days next week. Cause I'm actually going away at the end of next week, first to a mastermind with my business coach, and then also to one of my best friend's 50th birthday party where we're traveling around three states on a private train for four days, and it's gonna be madness and amazing. So please take advantage of this, um, You know, see if there's a session you can make it to. And I'm also offering bonuses for anyone who signs up with me. It's only good for the next couple of weeks because again, this is really about committing to yourself and your life in the new year. And I, I'm throwing in all these extra bonuses and I know I've just had a few clients sign on and take advantage of these. So again, look these over, we can discuss them more on the call, but really it, it's about up-leveling your life and really making 2018 your year. And I know so many people are saying, I already feel so much better in 2018. It's like, okay, great. You're already feeling good. Like let's take advantage of this good energy and put it to use, you know, and not just for you, but really like, how are we going to change this world together? Like, how are we going to make this a better place? How are, you know, how are we going to get your message out there? How are we going to heal the world and, and help people and, and really create this amazing world of peace, love, and, and happiness, which I know sounds cheesy, but it's the reality. It's like, we're all committed to the same thing. Like, how are we going to get there? We are not going to get there with you sitting on YouTube all day. So please um, do it for yourself and for the good of the world. So you know, I was trying to finish this up in 45 minutes, which means we have seven minutes. So I have a bunch of questions and <laughs> yes, yeah, someone mentioned that they also use lots of calendars. Um, you know, I, I've heard different theories about this that only use one calendar, but here's the thing. So a Google calendar, the one thing that, or, or you know, an electronic calendar, which doesn't work for that. Um, it works great for reminders. It works great for my virtual appointments, for things like, you know, scheduling a call, like, like here, this links to my Google calendar. But yeah, having multiple calendars, you know, especially a handwritten one, it does something different with the brain, right? So when you handwrite and you see it on a large scale piece of paper, like again, the overview calendar is this big. When you see it in front of you, you can actually start planning out and then planning backwards, right? So again, I have some big business goals this year and I already put them in and then I just started working backwards. Like, okay, where can I fit in my next uh, virtual summit? And I know I'm going to be moving. I know I'm going to be traveling. I know I'm, you know, taking time off, whatever it is. So I picked, you know, seeing the whole year at once on a piece of paper in front of me with a pen, I was able to plan all this out. So that's why I made that calendar and you can actually print it out for free. Um, 
And yes, someone is asking, um, will I be sharing this? Yes, I am actually going to share it. Ideally, I wanted you guys to all be on here, but I realized it's a Friday afternoon. And yes, I'm gonna share this PowerPoint and my calendar and the recording of this. And does anybody have any other questions? Um, you know, again, I am really doing this. I, I did this really just for fun. I mean, not for fun, but obviously to teach you. But I've just seen this happen so much with my clients, with, you know, just friends, with businesses. Honestly, I, you know, I've told many people the story. I used to work for a startup. They got all this money and funding from an investor. And because the CEO didn't plan properly, they actually went out of business. And um, to this day, they still owe a lot of people money. And it's, you know, it's unfortunate. It happened. But all it came down to was the planning and the focus and, you know, um, as a, as a small company, they were getting lost and procrastinating and things that actually didn't matter when they weren't focusing on the large scale picture and then building the business backwards. And this applies to anything, you know, it's not just about business and money and clients or whatever. It's really about life. Like whatever it is you want in life, you know, again, it's an act of co-creation. Like, yes, you have to put energy out there. Yes. You have to visualize. Yes. You have to be really heart focused and, and connected to, you know, a grander vision beyond yourself. Like this is again, this feminine energy, but you also, you know, you have to put actions. Like how would anyone get your message if you don't have an email list, for example, like, you know, how are you going to get clients if you don't have a way to reach your clients? Um, someone's asking about getting accountable. Yeah. Well, when I fix this PDF and send it out to you, these, these sections right here, are all about getting accountable. So again, you get accountable. The absolute best way to get accountable is to work with a coach or, and, or join a mastermind. Like I do both. I have um, multiple coaches and I'm in a mastermind. And honestly, I'll be honest with you. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing this webinar on a Friday afternoon, because uh, one of my coaches said to me, when are you doing your webinar? Cause I said, I wanted to do a webinar like two weeks ago. And I was like, well, um, by Friday, and then I realized I have a hair appointment on Friday and I have uh, another, I actually have an interview with someone else in 15 minutes. And I was like, man, I need to stick to that goal, whatever it takes, even having my PDF get all screwed up like you see here. But that's the point. The point is really putting your energy into it and it does not have to be perfect. I didn't even discuss how